We need to get y'all a gavel. Twenty five, forty five, forty five. It's full of Gatorade and now it's all shaky, but uh, it's not soda. Here we've got twenty five over here. Twenty five twenty five. Do I have thirty, 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 thirty? But, uh, fellow in the red, we, do we have 40, 40, can, do, can we get a 40? All right, 40 for the Mr. Shiny Head. Uh, uh, all right, can I get 45, 45, anybody 45? All right, going once, going twice. Sold for 40 to Mr. Shiny Head. What's your number, please? 641. Kind of yeah, we, nice. need to, yeah. we need to have the shadow board meeting of the people who have fed the number 1, 69, 420, 621, 926. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, N1337, the non voting number. I'll just make The resident commissioner for Puerto Rico. I feel like the, if he doesn't have a note card, he's not going to read it. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, I would like to do roll call, please. Night Panther, Daniel Deshand. I'm Blitzen, Christopher Darley. I'm Alan Rule. Kedzie, Steven Stoltenberg. Tanner, Brandon Richmond. All right, the quorum is established. Um, I believe Flounder is acting as the recording secretary of the meeting for today. Uh, we will go ahead and move on to old business first. Um, uh, first thing we'll need to do is a motion to approve the previous meeting's min uh, minutes, if everybody's had a chance to look at that. All right, then I will go ahead and put the motion in that we approved in the previous meeting's minutes. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes 6-0. Zero. 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 Um, <clears throat> next on the agenda for old business was the, uh, we had been discussing uh, moving the official general chat on Telegram into an unofficial general mm -hmm. chat, and we're going to be working with a uh, third party group to take that over. Um, there has been no um, extension of that at this moment because we are going to do more of the discussion after the convention so that we have time to implement the change. So that is still tabled. We will be working on that, probably have an update when the winter uh, meeting that we have later in the year. Um, we also had discussed about doing appreciation gifts for the staff. Um, we actually started working on the idea. We came up with a really cool idea with the pins, with the numbers. The only issue was the cost of getting them in time was uh, not available. So we are working on them for next year, and I think they will be awesome, and I think the staff will have a good, good kick out of them. So we will continue to proceed on those, and uh, excited to see how they turn out for everybody. Um, continuing on from old business, we were working on showing off the merchandise designs that we had revealed for all of the new characters that we worked on. Um, they seem to have gone over extremely well with the attendance and uh, with all of the swag that we've given out this year. I mean, I was told that they almost have sold out of the Typhon plushes already, if they have not as of this morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, still, they still had about five or six left that I was told. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. They, they, they may. They may People make like more. that Typhon. Uh, <laughs> sure. Everyone likes to make you a sea wolf. <laughs> yeah, then they should come to closing ceremonies because boy, we've got some fun for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, we were also working on the trademark and copyright of the characters. Um, we will be continuing that process after the convention because it does take some time. Um, but we want to make sure that we've crossed our T's and dotted our I's on that, so that everything is legal in the eyes of the state and of the, uh, the, the country as well. So, yes, yes. the feds. And I, I, I mix up sometimes of who has jurisdiction over certain things, so. Well, trademarks are fun because there's both state and federal versions. <laughs> and common law and register ones. And, and service oh, marks. Geez. And we have to do all of those, don't we? Yeah, pretty much. Ouch. That's why lawyer retainer fees are so high, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't use me for this one because I yeah. don't do that. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. a trademark lawyer. You get so. a bottle of bourbon and some in boozy. Mm. You don't do that either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> think of that. Did he even show this year? Who? I don't think he Boozy. was here this year. No, he wasn't able to come no. this year. Yeah. I saw a badger fursuiter, but you know, that was. Yeah. <laughs> but they were doing the, the badger badger mushroom dance, you know, oh. so at one point. 
Classic. No, he was here on the press kingdom and the cards against humanity. I wish he had. <laughs> if I had known he was here, I would have done my hardest to try to get to see that. But he's not here, so. Oh, mm -hmm. I still want to meet the guy. Yeah, I think he's, actually, he's awesome, so. Um, continuing on from old business, we were discussing the party floor decorum on our last meeting. Um, we had tabled it because there was not as much interest in the party floor this year as we were expecting, and we have actually really had no complaints from the, the uh, hotel uh, guests on the floor above with it this year, so it seems to have been rather tame. If we would want to continue looking into that again next year, we will work with the hotel on getting the decorum rules stated, and we'll have everything good for that. Uh, last item on old business is we had gone over uh, rules posters for convention space. Um, we did finalize those. Those were the main ones that we had in the main entrance of the mass recommended, no, uh, no weapons, and also the ones that we used in AV for the, these rooms contain intense sound, lights, uh, fog, and these basically warning messages saying if you have issues with certain things like this, please be aware that this is what's going to be in this room. So if you were entering here, you're entering at your own risk mm -hmm. kind of thing. So but other than that, that is the end of old business. Um, I don't think I have to do a motion to close old business, right? Okay. The next item on the list is the chairman's report. We're having a con. It's going good. Let's hope it keeps going good. The end. Chairman's <laughs> <laughs> review ever. I like it. I can agree with this report. Bad as it's not <laughs> <laughs> And then with that, we will be opening up new business. So. Um, and there's none of that. <laughs> as of right now, I don't have any new business on my agenda. Um, a lot of things will be discussed over the coming weeks with the hotel and with um, different departments and how things have gone this year and what can be improved. And we will work from there and have a more detailed report with the chairman's report <coughs> next, uh, next business meeting, the winter one. Um, we will do a quick opening of questions if anybody had any questions in the room. <laughs> what do you guys think about um, offering earplugs to attendants for the like main events. We actually do. They yeah. are on the back table in the AV booth. Yeah, the so if you come in, there's two big bags, grab one, oh, they're free. Yeah. The, signs, the signs in front of MBR say, if you need hearing protection, go to the AV booth. Okay. That's and what I've been doing. Yeah. ones and blue uh, ones. You can pick a color. <laughs> yeah, we do have a limited amount in there, I, but it wasn't that limited. Oh, yeah. no, no, oh there was not even opened a bag yet. So. So. Yeah, when I went in there oh, on there. Saturday night, the, the orange bag was still almost full. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, whenever I would go into the dance, I would grab some. I mean, mm -hmm. I was dancing to the electro swing last night right by the speakers with those things in, and I felt like I was listening to my earphones on mute, mm -hmm. despite yeah. being right up in front. They're very so they, effective. They are very effective. Now, can you carry on conversation with them? It's sort of like wearing uh, two fursuit heads. You know? <laughs> so you can take that as you will. Oh, with the wow. amount of base, I mean, the AV team did, oh, once they got everything up and running, they, they've overdone themselves this year. And, oh, I, oh, man, you felt it more than you Oh, I, 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 got, I got a full body massage up there, you know, <laughs> yeah. while dancing. Yeah, it was good. Mm -hmm. Charged some things loose that I didn't even know were in my chest. I went Lord. up there with one of our sound testers to see what we were pushing at Friday night. I stood right from one of our main speakers and held it up. I think we got to 117 as the highest. Cry me. And we're still well within range. Yeah. Oh, crystal clear, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It was our AV very team. good. Are those your speakers or who are the convention speakers? We rented the majority of the speakers in the main events room this year. The um, ones that are up on the lifts in the front are ours. The stack subs on the sides are ours. The ones in front of the stage are not ours, and the ones that are flying delay in the mid, in the middle of the room, are not ours. The sound system like that, we should have screened a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Oh, oh that one. Up, I was like, that <laughs> that's, queuing. that's my friend. Uh, that's my friend. Oh, Omni. <laughs> so they look cute. Yeah, they know. Wait, um. Well, I shouldn't be looking at your screen. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's right here. The internet connected immediately brought up Telegram as well. So uh -huh. people are messing with me already this uh -huh. morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome to being everything. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're like the one person version of Con Ops. If people don't know what to do, they tell Con Ops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Con Ops doesn't know what to do, they tell Blitzen. <laughs> if Blitzen isn't here, the Con does not op. <laughs> 
Yeah. Most of the things I heard the rest of the board members were like, ah, he's not here. I think he's not here. The guy who made the bass sounds over the box audio that was just like, that's like, we were reverberating. You wouldn't expect it. One thing, if you haven't noticed this year, is that we've been trying to separate the board more from the convention itself. We, The board is the representatives of Fluff, the Florida United Furry Fandom nonprofit company that runs Megaplex. But the convention itself is run by the chairman and the vice chairs, who have been basically handling a lot of the more the more detailed situations yeah, in regards yeah. to things. And it's been going really well. I, it's actually me. Who are the vice chairs again? this year? I'm sorry? Who are the vice chairs again? Uh, the vice chairs this year were Hino, uh, Ruby, uh, Sir Wax, and Cryos. Oh, all right. And we, we, everybody has done a very good job. I'm very proud of everyone this year, so. Mm -hmm. Any other further questions? Well, if not, then I'd say we should probably go right, get something to eat. <laughs> a, a bit, a bit of a question. Um, mm -hmm. I did notice this year, but between closing ceremonies and the final first parade, mm -hmm. just a, a bit more. Like there, there's furry okay this year, but last year there was two hours of just absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, so it, it's filled a little bit, which. Is appreciated, but um, uh, and I know closing ceremonies is the end yeah. of the con, so and the final first parade is the last thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the dance is too, but uh, the last uh, scheduled programming event, if anything. So. Right. Um, is there a chance to like still have the gaming room or the game room? I think is open until six tonight. Yeah. Yeah, normally they need that time to tear down because we have to get as much of the equipment down to the uh, main floor of yeah. con space mm -hmm. by Monday morning so that our trucker, uh, moving trucking company that comes in can yeah. pick everything up all at once. Because otherwise, if we make them wait, they charge us per hour for it. Yeah. They, they don't, don't want to feel my wrath. And in the gaming, the case, logistics. Gaming, the gaming floor case, rather, it takes us uh, three car loads just for the board games. Yeah. Well, then if, so if that's the case, that as quickly as possible. is there a chance of... Uh, Shortening the time span between closing ceremonies and the final purpose of parade. Normally, we would have it within an hour, but we wanted to expand it a bit more this year so that staff had a chance to have dinner. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Because that's right after yeah, the CC. As soon as the closing ceremonies is over, the staff dinner is beginning, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that the AV team has enough time to eat before they have to run back to the dances, and mm -hmm. also any staffers who want to be in the late night parade. Like I'm actually. The two of us are running it this year. Yeah, yeah. I want to get a suit, so <laughs> I, I haven't yeah, been suited all this week. It's still in my either. suitcase. Yeah, I haven't been suited either. I kind of would like the opportunity yeah. to. So, so yeah. I would like to be able to eat and then get upstairs and get in suit, so I can come down and get that parade ride. Yeah, when I was at Magic the Gathering, the, the, the one time the I was able to work at Grand Prix, we, <clears> we had <throat> our people who decided to stay behind for Sunday strike, mm -hmm. and it took them like two hours to get to dinner because they had to strike the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Grand Prix of South Florida or uh, Orlando, 2018. Oh, okay. Wednesday. Yes, sir. Just killed. Uh, I'm trying to be loud. Um, oh, no worries. Because, um, so I'm sure I know I've seen in our staff group, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of comments from other people, kind of just in general, in general, about this year being Elevator Con. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure. As far as the tower elevators go, I'm sure there's not really much the hotel can do about those for next year, if need be, especially for programming or dealers, <clears throat> is the hotel willing to let us use service elevators if we need to, as long as we let a hotel route. It's something that we can discuss with the hotel on. Um, we had advised them in advance this year that the hotels would be getting an extreme amount of use and that they should probably make sure any any normal um, maintenance on them is taken care of beforehand because otherwise they're going to break down or have issues like they've been having this weekend. So, I mean, this is our first year at the new hotel. There's going to be growing pains. The hotel will learn from this and make better use of their time with things next year. We'll hope to uh, see what other options we've got to help with it too. So, yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking mostly about myself because, you know, I've got that uh, rolling car with boxes going to and yeah. from for mm -hmm. all the stuff I'm doing. But I know other people are probably doing the same thing. I know yeah. dealers and artists <coughs> have to love their hotel guests who use wheelchairs and mobility stuff. scooters. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, was actually, I was actually curious about that myself, the load-in for dealers, because mm -hmm. I know the dock had some slowdown issues. 
and some clogging. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's definitely something we're going to have to work with the hotel yeah. on because people were trying to then park in the garage and schlep it all uh, the way across the, the please convention don't. space. Just yeah. trying to park in the garage and schlep yourself into the yes. convention yes. space. Yeah. Yeah. Gus had yeah. to go pick up the people from our sponsor, our sponsor, our partner game store yesterday. Yeah, from I heard about that. That yeah, was fun. The parking, the attendant at the gate said, if you don't have a room, you're not getting in the yep. garage, because we were that full in that garage. Wow. When so I went to Holiday Mopsery a couple years ago at the Marriott, it was the same way, because that's like a 10,000 attendee con. I, I've heard from other cons that use elevator hotels. There was a staff member who had the job of like, one elevator was up, one elevator was down. I'm not quite sure how the system works, but um, I'm a local, so I, I don't stay here. Yeah. Um, uh, apparently, that's the system that there was some sort of system of like, to, if you wanted to go up, you would be at this elevator. If you wanted to go down, you would be at this elevator. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see the men who went in at all the back for stop where you literally push the button tells you what elevator to go to. That would be yeah. nice. That is a special elevating system, and I've seen the good, I've seen the bad. If you go up to a floor, usually with those styles of elevator call systems, you get one option, down. You can't say, oh, I'm on floor nine, this is where I'm with my friends, I need to go to my room on 20. The only button you have in that area is call to go down. Yeah. Go all the way back down, and then get off, the hit another one. button, and it tells you which elevator to go. I think it would be to. nice if it were possible to have the elevators in like Shabbat or Paternoster mode, where they just call every floor. Yeah, no. it'll, it, it'll, no, no, no. it'll depend on what the hotel does with that, but I don't no, think that would be annoying. very annoying going, yeah. especially going yeah. down. Yeah, that would be basically what uh, And they keep hitting the weight limit on the elevators is the thing, uh, and that's why they keep skipping floors going down, mm -hmm. so. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the, the only thing also I'd like to say about the elevators is I, I it's, getting, it's a challenge for us that suit is standard etiquette that I've seen at most cons is if you have a full suitor, like we said during opening ceremonies, that is top to bottom, you see no skin, please let them hit the front of the line, because usually, especially here, if you're slogging from even headless zone A to tower two, by the time you get there, you're starting to get winded. Mm -hmm. You're starting to feel the heat. And one of the days I know I was up there waiting in my suit, and everyone's just shooting past me trying to get in the elevators, and I'm looking around at one point, I'm like, either I'm just gonna be Nasty and pull executive privilege and say, I'm suiting, I need to get in the elevator because I'm about to fall over and I don't think anyone wants to try to pick me up and move me. I mean, one thing I do if I'm at the elevators and there are full suitors there, I will stop others and say, please let suitors on first. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a lot um, of people I, doing that. Actually. It, yeah. They're um, getting better at it. It's yeah, a um, work in progress, I, definite. I would like to help with that, like after first suit parade and stuff. Mm -hmm. If we, I don't know if we did have somebody or not. But having at the, at least uh, the elevators have like a security person who's specifically there, say, you know, to control the elevators and get suitors on because they need to get up and get cooled down. down. Apparently yeah. some cons do that, like, like you said. Yeah, yeah. like Anthrocon, Anthrocon did that. that for years. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, well, of course, Anthrocon, the one hotel has a push button. You have to select how many people on the floor. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like they need somebody to control that elevator who knows how it runs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest, it just gets really messed up. Yeah. So. But uh, apparently that's a problem for any convention that has to use an elevator for their hotel is when people are trying to get to where they're going, it's just a mess. Yeah. When you have the mass exodus yeah. going one way or another, like after here, a first parade or after the, a, a major event closes or one's about to three open. To five minute yeah. Yeah. to get on the elevators. Yeah, yeah. Whereas about tower one. Tower one was oh, the tower one ones are Oh, the tower one had the line? Yeah. Well, the tower. Past the market walking towards convention oh, okay. space, that was tower one. Okay. Yeah, there were, there were two got. elevator sets for tower one. It was interesting. The first day I got here, you know, um, the the there's a tower set by near the lobby. That one was always completely full, so it's like I would just walk by and go do the other one. Now they, uh, the one closer to convention, I'm pretty sure they had some elevators potentially break. Uh, I did see them for a little while. Um, yeah, I, um, I always use that one and, it's right in front and of room. because, but that like everyone uses that. So I actually started using the other one, even though my room is by that end. You know, I started using the other one because not many people were using that one. Everyone just goes to the first elevator bank, you know, and that one would get all crowded up and full. So it's like, I'll go use the other one. 
There, there are two elevator banks, you know. Mm -hmm. um, to I, I think we may oh, need to, to like reiterate that on our on our mm -hmm. maps and our information. Then. Yeah, and I probably even during opening ceremonies too. So I'm I'm about next year. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the maps, I just had one one small gripe is uh, in the Megaplex app, the map not very color plane friendly. Maybe just put like letters next to each one of them, and then put letters on the map so you can easily see. Honestly, colorblind or not, I, it was very difficult to yeah. decipher. Okay. Yeah. Was the app like, not available on iOS? Green, they were all the same shape. Yeah. It it's, wasn't, I think, for earlier this year. I think it was working with the website. It was working. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's, that's, what, I did. The that's what I did. That's what I did. That wasn't in the app store. store. Yeah, our app is not there because it was created by someone that was already in the Play Store. And as an Apple employee, I can say the iOS uh, process to get into that is challenging, to yeah. say the least. And they are very strict on how it must function and the functionality it gives. So if you are off by just a little bit, you will get denied. And you have to pay another $100. And you have to keep that up, app updated a certain amount of times, and if it is, it, it will get pulled. I miss paper maps. <laughs> I we, were going to, we were going to try to do the, the map version of the pocket <coughs> schedule this year, but with how big the schedule was, yeah. it was just not feasible to be able to fit it. You would not have been able to see the map if we had been able to try to get it in there. So. You might have to do like a five-fold. We may actually have to do two separate pockets next Yeah, that would be A map version and a schedule version. Yeah, because most yeah. other cons will have like a uh, fold-out map, uh, fold map, and then the program as a staple booklet. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I saw with, because we had one of the maps right outside the Silver Suite, those mm -hmm. printed maps, a lot of people are just going up and taking photos of it. Yeah, you know, that's I smart. saw so many people taking photos. They would take a photo of the top and the that's smart. Smart, the middle floor and stuff. Um, and we were also acting whoever, usually whoever was sitting at the door there too, was kind of ending up as an information guide as well. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. It, Probably in so, future you should put a con ops person there. Well, so, well, we just need somebody, uh, we, well, honestly, I made sure that my staff and when we had volunteers there, I was like, hey, yeah, try to learn this because you're going to get asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's, you're, you're, you're sitting right next to a map. Mm -hmm. People yeah. will ask you questions. And the, so, thing, the thing is, is that we're also, with the next year, well, with maps, we're going to have them have you are here stickers so you know where you actually are when you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. That would be it's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. so you have to put them on after we put them in the con space. So. Yeah. The QR codes were actually a, a really good touch, too. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so make sure to keep that in there. In the pocket schedule, I would suggest go back to the hourly breakdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had it listed, and then you would find the number. And then have to match it. But, like, some things that were earlier were listed l much, much later in the... Yeah. And then... Mm -hmm. And it's in chronological order by room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, the old way, years back, you would have, like, 9 o'clock this, 10 o'clock this. I, I would suggest go back to that. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be making some adjustments from it. Other than that, any other last minute questions? Thank you guys, just oh. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I think food is in order though. Yes. So yes. I would like to go Very ahead. Much so. Let's be rich. Uh, it's taking longer than on site registration. Yeah, that was an issue because of uh, pre not pre printing batches this year. I, I think that means we will be going back to that route for next year mm -hmm. and getting them pre printed in advance. So. Yeah, but it's like I said, it's a learning curve with the new hotel mm -hmm. and well, new software. We're thinking in new software because we had a whole new system this year. I, I think a suggestion on that is um, I think one mistake was actually having two separate rooms mm -hmm. for pre reg and on site reg. Because what happened is at the very beginning, obviously, you had, and we made a big push to have everybody pre reg. And that created a really long line. Mm -hmm. And then people that just wanted to reg on site or processed in like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a suggestion would be to maybe try to combine that space mm -hmm. and maybe make the lanes dynamic. Yeah. So when the con <clears throat> when the con opens, like nine out of ten would be pre reg. And then as time progresses you start opening up or switching yeah. lanes mm -hmm. to the pre reg on site, on -site to manage the load. That way you kind of fairly balance who has pre-regged and who is walking up on site. 
and think with if we do go back to pre-printing the badges, it would go smooth because it's there. The only challenge is in the past we do it is it's printing up two, three, four thousand badges and then sorting and then sorting them, verifying them, cutting them, stuffing them in the envelopes, make sure the envelopes match, and finding a place to put them all and get them here. That's usually the hardest part of it. But once it's here, as long as we have the right this is A through D, this is E through and such. As long as everything matches, which usually they do. Usually. We can do it. Only once in a while does one slip through and we've got to find it, but one-offs are easy to print on site. Mm -hmm. well, and with the system, it's much faster to do that. So. I, I do have a quick suggestion also on that. Rather than al <laughs> rather than put the badges by alphabetized, put them by uh, badge number. That's yeah, going to be the fun part, trying to locate their badge number. When you have an ID, you can look up their last name a lot faster than having to go in the no, system and find a badge just, number first. Just to quick okay. aside on so, that, has anybody actually timed the difference in a walk-up registration for pre-reg and us actually sorting and hunting through those bins to find the envelopes? Because when, that took forever last yeah. year. When we when we were doing it <laughs> this year, and the reason why we didn't pre-print the majority of the badges to pre-reg this year, we it timed that with the new printers and everything that we had, we were supposedly saving about two to three seconds. That's where kind of printing them on site than having to go look them up. But I mean, it's a catch twenty two there. We saw how quickly we were able to print things on site this year, but then still had the, the immediate slog in pre reg with everything. So we just need more stuff. Like, yeah, we're we're uh, scan IDs. We were scanning we were, IDs. We were scanning so, IDs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest yeah. problem is, is if you're under 21, um, the vast majority of the states do not include any of their information on the barcode beyond their driver's license number and their date of birth. Mm. So none of that personally identifiable information is on that barcode yeah, if they are sucks. under 21. So, so the scan and on the mag so one of those, we had to type in manually. Is it on the mag three? Um, no, oh, okay. no it, it's it's literally on nothing until they're 21. It's a privacy thing. Yeah. yeah. But lots of good things to work on. <coughs> we're we're with this hotel for at least a few more years, so it's, hopefully I, things will continue to be better. Nice hotel. Yeah, the, yeah, I approve. Very nice hotel. The staff's approved. been really nice and stuff too. So. Do you have one more last question? Yeah, just one more real thought. If we do go back to pre-printing badges ahead of time and stuffing them in envelopes and all that, mm -hmm. I know in years past when we were doing pre pre-printed yes, you badges, have you'd have the envelope, and then you'd have the thermal label stuck on the envelope. Mm -hmm. yep. anybody, especially now that we're with this new registration system, does it support, you know, can you export to CSV or an Excel file or something? Can we just build like a form letter printer in Word or something, have someone manning a laser printer, feeding envelopes into it, and just cut that step out, cut all that voice out? If we could, it would depend on having a way to be able to print them right on the envelopes. With like a printer that can handle it, all the um, stuff. In. It's a, it's an idea. You know, I definitely would try to do it. Most yeah, yeah, most most laser jet, you know, most laser printers can do that. I do. We do that all the time in my professional mm -hmm. job. Just feed it in. You just keep the labels. If there's an error, we can use it. You just, you just feed the you just feed the envelope into the slot and pull it through. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll, I'll, yeah, I will add, or at least related to the badge number, but this system, it like prints, you know, well, the current one, it prints the badge number based off of when it's printed. Um, I, I did get to volunteer for like 12 hours at Anthrocon in the reg, um, and they, their system, while they had everything pre-printed, um, which is good up to, their system only worked to 90, 9,999, and then it didn't print any more numbers because the system didn't know how to do five digits. Uh, but oh, that God. was its own issue. Um, we aren't there yet. We aren't there yet. You've unlocked there yet. Yet. You've that's, 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 um, ancient magic. But, uh, but, the, but they actually had basically an Excel sheet on all the laptops, and somebody would give the name, and it would just like you check the name, it's all alphabetized, and then it would all oh, be so printed on the side. So, okay. And then you would just tell your runner behind you, hey, this is the number. Um, and if it, if they were in a different category, um, well, again, they were all organized by like the low numbers were your your higher end like sponsor stuff and stuff too. So it's yeah. you know, I don't know if that could be done like uh, a public or like an Excel sheet or something like that. It's too, possible. We can work with the rich team on that and uh, see what would be some good feasible. Mm -hmm. Reminds me sure. of the bad old days of magic yep. tournaments. Yeah. Our old magic tournament software DCIR did not understand table numbers above uh, 1,999. 
So if you had 4,000 players sign up for a GP, you had to split it into fights, otherwise DCIR would crash. Okay. And again, doing much, pretty okay. much anything would make DCIR crash, which is why we're happy to be rid of it. But I would like to like, actually go ahead and get the meeting closed, though, because there are some people that do need to get running for the, the car show. I don't want to keep them. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and put the motion that we uh, adjourn the meeting, and uh, we will be back in for our winter meeting uh, later in the year. Second it. And then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 600. Zero, zero. We're all set. Thank you all. Have a great rest of the day and enjoy Mega Play. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Break. <laughs> all right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, uh, breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, I like so your idea. I was like, still uh, there, were a, there were about four or five. Yeah.